all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Boxing World Weekly, speaking with the former WBC light flyweight champion, Kim Clavel, after her uh, very tough and close loss to Jessica Plata uh, just this, this past weekend. And first, I want to start at the beginning of fight night. Uh, you got there much earlier than most main event fighters get to an arena, and you wanted to kind of manifest inside that ring. I want to know what was going through your head when you were inside the ring. Uh, I felt good. I, I had Lucien Gute beside of me. My team was there. Uh, my first thing is that, whoa, it, the ring, it was little, a little ring. But uh, I, I was ready for that. And I, I knew that that would be a big fight because Jessica Nehipata, she's a good champion. She has a lot of, of good experience. And we knew that uh, we would have no round hazy. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And yeah. the odds didn't represent that. Uh, the betting odds didn't represent it being a close fight, but I think everybody who actually was following uh, you, you two in your careers, I think they knew that that was going to be a good fight. Um, throughout the night as you're warming up and you're getting shown on the jumbotron could you hear the crowd in your locker room yes the the crowd was amazing uh, even while the the fight i can hear go kim go everyone was there and they were emotional uh, into it because even after the fight my my father and my mother said he, we saw a lot of people in the crowd who were crying because you lost and they <laughs> we were there. It was intensive. Yeah, I would say the only two times I felt that much emotion for a fight was Taylor Serrano, and that was more of a surreal moment. And the the this would be the most emotional investment I had in a fight where I try <laughs> not to cheer, and I usually don't cheer, and I'm usually pretty good at it. But uh, as we were getting into the latter half of your rounds, I was. I, I, I had no choice uh, but to cheer because I was so emotionally invested. And then afterwards, um, in the post-fight press conference, when you came out and you did your monologue, uh, you actually had me uh, like tearing up and uh, it, like I could feel it even more. So yeah. I wanted to say that uh, you as a fighter and a person have had that impact on people because of who you are, not just because of the fighter that you are. So. Uh, credit to you for that. Did the crowd and the attendance uh, that was announced, did that surprise you by any means? Yes, that yeah. surprised me. Uh, I, I didn't... I, I didn't knew that it had a lot of people, uh, close to 4,000 and more people, and and they had a bad temperature outside, so I was like, wow, they, they still came to see me. And I received, like, a thousand and thousand and thousand of messages who told me, uh, let me know when is your next fight because I want to buy ticket. I want to be there. I don't want to miss that. Uh, so uh, it's nice to have that. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was more than what I thought was going to be. The atmosphere was phenomenal um, to the point where there was rounds. You guys couldn't even hear the bell ring. Um, and that was that was pretty cool to see. The only time I've, the only other time I've seen that was Taylor Serrano. Um, so let's get into the fight itself and how you were going through the fight in your, in your mindset. What were your thoughts during the fight? And like, were there certain points, uh, I want to ask, I'll, I'll specify in the third round, in the second and third round, that's kind of when it felt like things started to become more real for you, where you kind of realized like, oh, like she's much, she's doing much better than I thought she was going to do. Is that true? Like, what, what, what were you thinking? I think that she was like I I thought she would be because I, I look a lot of fight of her and she's good. She have a good experience, good left hook, good jab. But I think she performed really, really, really well this night. And me, I know that I didn't perform as I know I'm capable of. And I, I think a couple of days after, when you have a loss, you ask yourself a couple of questions that you probably never ask if you would win. Yep. But uh, I think I, I get emotional in the, this fight. Uh, I fought with my my heart, my guts, but not, not enough with my head. Uh, it's like I, 
I, I, I did a war and I didn't add two ma ha, uh, doing a, a war. Mm -hmm. I play her game, not my game. And I remember in the corner, um, it, it was difficult for me to, to concentrate, to have a good concentration. But I remember Daniel told me that you don't have to always be in the action. Uh, put your jab and move around, uh, do angle and stuff like that. But it's like in my head, I knew that I had the solution. That was a solution. But it's like my body didn't work with me. It's, what, it's like I fought for the crowd, for the fans. Uh, I did a war for the TV, for everything, but uh, at the end, I lost. So I will have lessons to to uh, understand about that. So it's I, I, I will not give up. I will just work harder and not harder, it's smarter because I, I work really hard, but smarter and I will find someone who can help me to um, to have a better concentration and to gérer my emotion. I have a couple things I want to say to that. And first of all, that was a that was a great response. Uh, first things I want to say is the way that you fought that fight, regardless of whether that turned into be a win or a loss, uh, will probably be better for your career uh, afterwards. Um, because in terms of The, the crowd and the entertainment, and the television and everybody else that was watching it, they were treated to what is being talked about as the kickstart to fight of the year conversations in 2023. And I think that, you know, you might be right. I was saying during, uh, I think it was after the third round, I was talking to Claire. She was sitting next to me as we were watching the fight. And I had told her that if Kim's going to win this fight, it's going to be because she's going to stay on the outside and try to box with Plata. Because as of right now, Plata looks like the faster fighter. Um, so I agree with you and it's good. And I'm, and I'm glad to hear that you came to that same realization. Just unfortunately, obviously, when it came to the bell ringing in each round going on, you decided to get into a war, which like I said, was much more entertaining than had you have done the other thing. But, you know, that's just, you'll, you'll, I think every fighter goes through that. I think that when it comes to big fights like that, I think every fighter goes through, you know, in their corner, they're thinking a different thing than what they're going to do when they actually go out there for th for two minutes or three minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a very normal uh, reaction, I think. The second thing I wanted to mention is you said you worked really hard. I was actually talking to Maslam, and I know you worked really hard because you and Maslam have the same strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. And that strength and conditioning coach told Maslam that you were performing at levels that he hadn't seen from female fighters and that female fighters probably shouldn't even be performing at. So uh, in terms of how hard you work, I want to know that I want to let you know that the actual results also show that you work much harder than most people do. So I wanted to say that as well. So after the fight, how did you feel the scorecards were going to go? After my fight, uh... I knew that I lost. Okay. I, I knew it maybe for by one or two rounds. I know that was close, but I you can't feel it as a boxer. I was in the ring. Uh, I get hit a lot. Uh, I knew that I'm much better boxer than what I, I did. But I know that was a hell of a fight. But I felt that I, I lost by one, two rounds. And I'm really okay with the decision. Um, I don't have any complaint about it, and it's okay. And you know, uh, you can see the your team in the victory in the the dressing room after a victory. But I was happy because I have all the same people after uh, a defeat, a loss. All my people was there, so I have a good people around me. And Yvon Michel was there, and we were listening the the scorecard, and he look, eight round on ten that the judge wasn't in the same uh, ID, the same scoring, and it's okay. You amazing, Kim. He was so positive. He said that that fight will not close any door. We we can't come back in world championship. Uh, 
soon and everything with Bioki. You did amazing. So Daniel was there. My best friend was there. Uh, a couple of comments in from Quebec came and cry and take me in their harm. So that was, I, I'm okay with everything. And after that, uh, the, one day after and two day, I, I felt like it was the end of the world for me. Like I, I was in, in my house crying in the black light, no light, uh, really depressed. But my father t uh, called me and he was like, Hey, do, do, are you Arturo Getty? He said, No. Are you Arturo Getty? He said, No. He said, Oh, he said, everyone uh, has me. Are you the father of Kim Clavel? She, she's like Arturo Getty. She has so much heart. Uh, you can be proud of your daughter. Nah, nah, nah. He was so positive, nonstop. 30 minutes positive in my head. I said, okay, uh, I have something to do with that. I have to be positive too. Uh, and after that, I have to, I, I, I accept all the interview, the talk with you, go in the, the, the casually show, uh, everything. I did it after I called my father and it's like, okay, no, it's not the end of the world. I still have my two arms, I'm healthy and I, I just have to take a break for my head and we go back. It's an experience and I know that a lot of young people are watching me and maybe I can prove them that when you persevere, when you work, you still can go on the top of the world. Yeah, that's a phenomenal story. I'm, I, I'm so happy to hear that. that gave me uh, goosebumps actually. Um, have you watched the fight again? No, I'm not ready to watch it, but uh, <laughs> I will with uh, Daniel and Stefan round by round. But I know that the first time I will watch it, it's gonna be really, I'm gonna be emotional because it's hard to see yourself lost. And it's like, it's a new zone for me. Uh, I never, felt that in the professional. I think my my last loss was in amateur in 2016. Wow. So it's a couple of years I didn't feel that and that hurt. And I believe in we have the right to feel it, to live it. And it's really important to not deny it. So I will live it, I will cry, I will be angry. And I will come back and smile again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good to hear. Um, and I know, I think this question was asked to you prior to the fight, uh, but after the weigh-in, she weighed in obviously pretty light for the weight that you were fighting at. And I know I think somebody else asked you about it on whether whether you were surprised or concerned or, or what, and you told them that you weren't, uh, it wasn't going to matter. Um, do you think that that after the fight, do you think that that mattered? No, I don't think that really matter. I think it's a, an old mentality. Say, oh, I'm gonna make my daughter lose weight because she would be more fast. But I don't think it two pounds make you faster. Um, no, I, it's not an excuse. She that was special to to weigh in so light, but that not make her win that fight. Fair, fair enough. I, I agree. I don't think there's enough of a weight uh, discrepancy for that to matter. Um, <laughs> but last time I talked to you, I also told you that uh, in terms of every single fight in your career, and I mean every single fight, they weren't close. You dominated and you might have lost one or two rounds in your entire career going into this fight. And I thought that that was uh, a massive challenge ahead of you for someone who was coming off a, a Jessica Bob win and uh first i want to commend you on that um but you're right you said that it's a new zone it is a it's it's a completely new zone even if you came out and won the fight it would have been a new zone because that was the toughest fight of your career um mm. she mentioned after the fight i don't know if you've thought about this yet but she mentioned in the post fight press conference uh that she is more than willing to do a rematch but she would like if it happened in mexico what are your thoughts on that 
it's okay it's it's it's, it's in hong kong i will go to hong kong uh, i don't care but that that side of boxing is really business and i know yvonne michel will uh, take care of that and maybe next fight not gonna be uh, a rematch but maybe at the end of the year and uh, in this moment you have a lot of movement in light flyweight you see the the fight is coming in between uh, uh, evelyn bermudez tanya enriquez uh, i don't know what what uh, jessica will do uh, so things can change so fast we will see the the new road but uh, i know that i i will work smarter in the on the top of the world uh, maybe at the end of the the year i will come back uh, stronger than ever i i wouldn't be surprised if that's the case and i and i assume it will be um when if you if you do have a if you have a thought when do you plan on being back in the gym if you aren't already <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, for now i really want to do other things Yeah. It's, it's been like six months I'm in the gym not in the gym non-stop and I do only boxing 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 apartment boxing apartment boxing I'm so scared to have influenza or stuff like that so I I, I was really alone but uh, next Friday I'm going to Panama and hey. I book a, a travel and I'm going to visit all Panama And maybe I would go. I, I would bring my boxing gloves, of, of course, and <laughs> I would go maybe in the in the gym to see how it is. Maybe I would meet Roberto Duran. It would be nice. <laughs> But uh, I I need a big month uh, without obligation, uh, without a schedule of training camp and stuff like that. But uh, at six tonight, it's our dinner with Yvonne Michel and all the team. So I will know more after that about the planification but i think um uh, at the start of summer or end of uh, printemps i don't know printemps in, in english uh, printemps winter no after winter spring yes <laughs> maybe <laughs> at the end of spring uh, start of summer of stuff like that i will be ready to to fight again of course awesome that's that's phenomenal to hear <laughs> and I, I was surprised too because uh, uh, Saturday I was ready to do like a post mortem uh, about my fight to the my post of, on Facebook and and uh, maybe I, after six minutes I have hundred commenter and now I have 500 600 but all positive all love I was reading that and I was like oh wow I can It, that was a like a, a love wave that I had, and people are good. A lot of people are good in this world, and we we can have that love because it's good for the the heart. Um, so now that I heard that you're going to Panama, uh, that means that means you that means you aren't going to uh, New York in February, right? And I'm not going it. Yeah. I, I will watch on TV. I will be in Panama, and of course, I will find a place to to watch it. <laughs> awesome, Kim. Um, I think that's all I got. If there's anything else you would like to say, uh, feel free. the The floor is yours. <laughs> yes, but I, I want to thank everyone who was there at La Place Belle. Uh, it was an amazing night. Even if I don't have the 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 the, the victory, but I know that night woman boxing won again and we proved that it's phenomenal and now it's deep we have so much talent in this world and keep coming seeing us shining around the world and i'm not dead i'm 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 in life in life more than ever so i will come back stronger